What's going on guys? Welcome to NetTech Explain. This is going to be the first in a new series of videos. I've recently had a few people asking for a full zero to hero course on SQL injection. So in the next three or four videos, I'm going to cover what SQL injections are, how they work, and different ways to exploit them. The breakdown at this point is using this first video to walk through a little background on SQL itself. In the next video, we're going to cover some SQL injection basics. After that, we'll do a deep dive into blind SQL injections. And the last video I have planned will be about evasions and optimizations. While the series is geared towards beginners and advanced users alike, I do recommend that you know at least a little Python by video 3, since we'll be writing our own scripts to exploit the blind SQL injections and optimize our workflow. Now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right in. SQL, also known as Structured Query Language, is a standard language used to interact with databases. In a SQL injection attack, we try to find ways to inject our own code into a backend query. If we're successful, we can manipulate or steal all of the application's data. For a quick primer on how SQL normally works, I highly recommend checking out W3Schools. They go over all the common uses and even have practice databases that you can interact with. Links, as always, are in the description below. The other important thing to remember is that there are really three popular SQL servers. There's MySQL, or MariaDB, Postgres SQL, and MS SQL, or the Microsoft SQL Server. Let's walk through some statements together. So first, we're going to start with some basic usage. Uh, I have this first link, which is the basic SQL tutorial, and we're going to click the Try It Yourself button. So in here, we see select star from customers. And when we run our SQL query, uh, it's going to select all of the rows and columns from the database. If we want to select specific columns, we can enter those values in. So for example, we want to select customer ID and customer name from customers, run the query, and there we go. Now, if we want to select by a condition, for example, let's do select star, but let's do it with the where clause. Uh, and in this case, let's see where customer ID equals three. And now I got the third customer ID. Uh, we can also do this with strings. So say instead of customer ID, we do country. And let's set our country to Mexico. Notice that I'm using single quotes here, and this is usually how it's done in typical SQL fashion. That'll be important later on. But when I run SQL, we can see that it's only selected the rows that have the country set to Mexico. The last thing I wanna show you is what are called conjunctions, or basically how we can chain conditions together. So in this case, let's do uh, where country equals Mexico and uh, customer ID equals three. Run the SQL and there we go. If I set this to and customer ID equals four, it's gonna fail. And the reason is because there is no record uh, for customer ID four that also is in Mexico. Later on, we'll see how we can use this in order to uh, test some truisms. So for example, uh, and one equals one, right? This is a true statement, so it's always going to be true. Uh, we can do and one equals two, which is a false statement and will always be false. And with the and command, we can also do an or, so they either have to be in Mexico or the statement one equals two has to be true. There we go. Awesome. These are some generic examples of typical SQL uses. Next, let's take a look at two concepts we're going to need to know for our union-based SQL injections and blind SQL injections. Unions are the first type of SQL injection that we will take a look at. The union operator allows us to add results from other tables onto the results of our first query. The reason we want to know about this one is because when we have an application that returns results back to the user, we also want the application to return other information back to us. In common cases, this will be usernames and passwords or other sensitive information stored in the database. 
With the union operator, we can do just that. Here's an example. I'm gonna to go to the union page in W3 Schools. I'm gonna scroll down to the Try Me section and try it ourselves. So here we see Select City from Customers, Union Select City from Suppliers. And we're going to order by the city. That means to sort alphabetically by the city. To make things a little easier, I'm actually gonna add in a couple columns. So I'm just gonna say Select 1 and Select 2. So run the SQL injection and we can see some of the results where they belong to the table users as shown by this one uh, and others that belong to the table suppliers as shown by this two. The most important thing about union SQL statements is that the number of columns between the first and second query must be identical. If not, we're gonna get an error like this. So if I change this to be select star from customers, we're gonna get a different number of columns. Uh, whereas our second query select two and city from suppliers is only gonna return two columns. So run the SQL and here's our error. The number of columns in the two selected tables or queries of a union query do not match. During our discovery phase, we can test the application to see the number of columns the first query returns using the order by operator. So if I was to uh, delete all this, I would say order by, and then we can just guess the number of columns. Uh, so if I did order by four, it's going to sort by column number four. Order by sorts the result based on the numbered column. So we can keep guessing the number of columns until we run into an error. The first number that gives us an error means that we went too far and the number before it was the one that indicated the last column. So if I did order by six, no errors, order by seven, no errors, order by eight, error. So this tells us that seven is the number of columns in the first query. So we have to select seven columns when we perform our union for this statement. So if I go back and I say union, select, and then I can just select seven columns. In this case, I'm just gonna enter in numbers. And then I'm gonna continue with the order by city. So I can run the SQL statement and we can see that it's selected the, the row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I see that column five is cities for customers. So I'm gonna change column five to be city. I'm gonna run the SQL query. And here we can see our results. Everything that says one, two, three, four, five, we know comes from the suppliers table. So this is how we use order by in order to identify what areas of the application our information will be returned from the second query that we perform. Cool. We'll see more about how to use this technique in our exploits later on. Next, let's take a look at substring and if statements. In blind SQL injections, we usually run into two situations. Either we get a different result depending on a pass fail condition, or we have to force the application to give us a different result by using some sort of time-based SQL injection. The important thing here is that blind SQL injections are injections that we can perform when the application doesn't actually give us the information that we're asking for. So instead, we have to guess. In either case, we still approach the injection the same way. Basically, we guess a result in our query, character by character. For example, does the first letter of user account one start with the letter A? No. B? No. C? No. D? Yes. Cool. The first letter of our user starts with the letter D. And then we ask for the second and the third and so on. And that's where substring comes in. We slice the result into individual characters and guess each one. We need to make sure that we do this in the substring section of W3 schools. So let's do the try it yourself. Just right out the gate, we can see a basic example where it selects the substring from the string SQL tutorial. It selects um, starting at the first position and it selects three characters and it calls it exact string. So if I run the SQL query, it's going to return SQL. If I wanted to start this at the fifth position, it'll select TUT. 
there you go. So let's say we wanted to guess the city for customer one. So in this case, let's go ahead and do select star from customers where customer ID equals one. So this will give us our information. And I'm doing the full results here instead of having us actually guess just so that we can see what the different results look like uh, when we get an answer correct and when we get an answer wrong. So in this case, let's go ahead and just add a substring uh, for the first letter of the city and we'll guess A. So I'm gonna enter in substring city. I want the first position and then, which is gonna be the first letter. I only want one letter at a time and then I'm gonna see if it matches the character A. Again, notice I'm doing single quotes here as per SQL stuff. So we see that the customer ID equals one and substring city equals A is false. But if we guess the next letter, B, it returns true. So this is a way that we can do uh, true false statements using substring if we have some sort of blind SQL injection. We can also set a sleep timer using if statements. Now, this is when the application returns the same information regardless of whether or not uh, our statement is true. So what we have to do is force the application to give us a different response based on a true false value. So in this case, we can, if we know where an SQL injection is, we can perform a query with an if statement. We say, if this is true, sleep for a second. If this is not true, just go through nor like normally. And then we can just measure the response time of the application in order to tell that uh, question is true or false. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So let's stick with the select star from customers where customer ID equals one. Now the database in W3 schools is actually an MS SQL database. So in this case, we're gonna have to do a double I if statement and then we can ask uh, for the ASCII. ASCII will give us a character value instead of the, um, I should say it gives us a decimal value for the character instead of the character itself. Uh, so this is great for things that are like non-printable characters or weird characters. Uh, it just gives us a, a little bit more flexibility. So we can do ASCII and then substring and we'll stick with our city, the first position and only one character and we want to see if this equals say the character number 97 if it's true return one if it's false return null and then we want to see if it's true then it will say one equals one if it's false then it will say null equals one which is a false statement so let's take a look if this is true we run the SQL query and here we have an error let me take a quick look, make sure that I have everything set. I did not, I was missing a parentheses. Let's go ahead and run the query. And the number of records is zero. So at this point, we can play the game higher or lower. So we made the initial guess, uh, character number 97. Now we can ask, is uh, the value of that substring greater than 97? Run our query, we still get no. And then we can ask, is that value less than character number 97? We return our record and the answer is yes. So we know that it's not 97. So we can guess a lower number. Uh, in this case, I know what the actual number is, but I wanna show you that there are no tricks up my sleeve. So I'm gonna do the incorrect guess of number 67. It's going to say false. And then the correct character number, which is 66, it's going to return true. Now, where I'm getting these numbers, you can look at any ASCII table and it will tell you the hex value, the decimal value, and the string value of what this character is. So in this case, a capital B, it correlates to the number 66 in decimal. Awesome. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. In this video, we did a brief introduction to SQL and some common uses that we'll apply later on. In the next video, we'll get started with a basic SQL injection and do a deeper dive into how they work. In the meantime, check out the links in the description below for the resources I used here. And don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this. I'll see you next time.